Thank you. It's a great honour and pleasure to be with you again today. I see some faces that I remember from last time. Uh, we're getting some Ness addicts. We're, we're getting some groupies, I think. But uh, we welcome all. And uh, there is a huge amount of clinically useful information I have to give to you for those using the new eye health as well as the new provision. What we didn't have in the first mess was emotions. Now, emotions come from Italy, as far as I know. Sports cars, <laughs> shirts, spaghetti, and emotions. But when I go to Italy, I'm not going to mention this. Um, what we missed out, being a bit English, English don't have them. So we, we're sort of adding that we're catching up. We're catching up on the, the emotions as the background and possibly the driving force of your disease. And we have two extraordinarily interesting and inspiring people, not me, with us today, who had a part in the development of Ness Emotions Ideas. I had an interest in the new medicine proposed by Dr. Ruka Hama in 2000 in the basis of thousands of his case studies in Germany. And for that reason, I contacted Richard Fluke, who is going to lecture you today or tomorrow. To obtain more information from Richard, we met together in sunny Spain in the mountains because he was using a neurolinguistic technique of blowing up little emotional patterns <coughs> and getting the emotional response, the emotional release. And it suddenly dawned on me that emotions, nobody knows what they are. They always think they're neurotransmitters. No, 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 no. Emotions are little packets of information lasting about 15 seconds, no, no longer. When you think about what an emotion is, you could say what it is in 15 seconds. Oh, if only Freud had known that, he wouldn't have taken 60 years to... <laughs> Um, I began to consider after a time that Hamer's four brain maps might be the most interesting part of his interesting discoveries. What Hamer did was go into embryology and into genetics, mostly embryology. You need to study medicine, you need to study embryology to understand the hologram of the body. Embryology is very important science for Ness people. Um, embryology is about tubes, about cavities, twists and folds, you know, gastrulation, things fold inside out. It's about dynamic space. I bet you weren't taught embryology as a dynamic science, you learn this. And it's not, embryology is fascinating. Another event occurred in November 2008 when I had more serious and ongoing talks with Phil and Newcomb, who will also be talking to you in this weekend, who is a famous choreographer, who has miraculous, miraculously, miraculously turned the tetragrams of the Qing into movements which release emotions. Sounds incredible. For, the, for those of you who think the I Ching is about hexagrams, it was about the tetragram before that. It's an earlier form of I Ching uh, mathematics. I Ching is pure three-dimensional mathematics. I'm leaving that to <coughs> Dylan Newcomb to explain. We spent two years of full-time research trying to get infraceuticals that work on the different parts of the hologram in the brain. There are so many different bits in the brain, it didn't seem practical to get an infraceutical for each one, so we have to do groups. To do so, we looked at Dr. Ruka Hama's correspondences of parts of the brain which for neurologists are completely baffling. There are no known nerve pathways between Rukahama's bits of brain and the actual organs. 
what he has done is rediscovered the body hologram. We're looking at it as a holistic idea and uh, a hologram of energy that transfers the information. It doesn't go through the orthodox concept of the nervous system at all. Could we have a slide? Two. Is Nogier the famous French version of uh, Chinese ear acupuncture? This is the one that's most effective. This is the one that's most used clinically. And what is it? It's a picture of an embryo upside down. We've got a little picture of the body mapped out in the ear. There it is. Nothing to do with the central nervous system. It has everything to do with the body hologram. Do we have another one? Where, where should I be looking? To? Where's my slide map? Oh, there you are. Oh, hi. It's all right. If I know where you are, I can... The orthodox people worked out that it was a bit... They're on the track. You know, every new medicine person has to study the homunculus. There's a picture of the body on the surface of the cerebral cortex called the homunculus. So the orthodox sort of got that far, but that, then they stopped a little bit, little bit threatening. However, the Tibetans didn't stop. You can have Tibetan reflexology. There's a picture of the organs of the body on the sole of the foot. The Koreans, have we got Korean hand acupuncture? Yes, here it is. Korean hand acupuncture is a picture of the body on the palm of the hand. There's another picture of the body on the dorsum of the hand. Mm -hmm. The Chinese think another one on the scalp. These are just pictures of the body hologram. Another one, please. People talk about reflexology. It is not, it's nothing about reflexes. It's not a nerve reflex going through the spinal column. I'm sorry, the terminology is incorrect. We need to say it's a reflection of the hologram. So we've got the sole of the foot. We've got, oh, there's another system on the nose. There's nose acupuncture, ear acupuncture, cortical acupuncture, sole of the foot. So it goes on. I think the most important one clinically is the ear, but there are, there's plenty of opportunities for action there. So we've dropped the nerve connection theory simply because I don't think there are any nerve connections. And this meant we were in uncharted territory because it implied dropping the idea of the nervous system. We dropped it because it, uh, it doesn't work. The nervous system is a highly fragmented, you know, you've got a little bit here, a synapse, some chemical, electrochemical, another little bit, another synapse. It cannot transfer information quick enough to explain how we get premonitions, how we get everything slowing down during a car accident. Suddenly you enter another time frame. So you're using your other nervous system, the instantaneous one. So we're now looking at emotions as a combination of energy, which comes from the cavities in the body. Chinese medicine was always interested in cavities, the San Zhao, but the organs themselves are cavities. The brain was seen as a cavity. Because what the cavities do, they collect information, they collect energy from space just by being there. The information comes from the sensorium of the body. The five, there's five of them, you, you, you already know them. So think about that, cavities plus sensorium. Sensorium is going to mean something about the head, sure. So the orthodox have got some of it right. The head is definitely involved in emotions insofar as it's the source of the information for the emotions. But the emotions actually live all over the body. Now, these are the four parts of the brain that were used by, uh, for scanning 
for thousands and thousands of examples of people with cancer by Rukahama. This is now used in NLP. And I want you to look at this because you've got to become familiar with what occurs where. Could we look at brain holograms? Brain stem, the old, oldest part of the brain, and possibly the most important as far as primitive emotions go. Then we get a flow to cerebral medulla. What we find in the brain stem is the control of the circulatory system, which is not there. Get acoustic nerve, rectum, colon, so on. And the biggest one there is uterus. Wherever you get uterus, for a male, you can put the genitals. Okay, so that's just for a female. Now this is our rapid, this is our emotional nervous system, the bit that works instantaneously. We look at cerebral medulla, what do we get? We get the spine. Three parts of the spine is a major part. We also got a lot of the major organs situated here. Right in the middle of it all is ovaries, testicles or gonads. Uh, some terrible things happening emotionally when you get a disease in the, uh, in the testicles or the ovaries. Those are two, here's another two. We then go to the newer parts of the brain where we've got the next, next one. Oh. The cerebellum, that little crinkly bit that comes off the back there, the cerebellum is of very little there. But what is there is terribly important because we've got mammary glands which are always going wrong with um, breast cancer. Hamer was very interested in breast cancer. We've got pericardium here, peritoneum and pleura. But look at the huge area for mammary glands that, that is um, there. It's an enormous area. Obviously mammary, mammary glands are incredibly important emotionally. Next one, we look at the cerebral cortex the new part of the brain and the biggest part in some humans. And we get mucosas and muscles of organs. We don't get the structure of organs. This one is really hard to fix. This is why we spent 18 months trying to get an interceutical to work on cortex. It, it just doesn't. Very, very difficult. But it is possible with Ness uh, professional to do something about the cortex. What is there? We've got veins, arteries, mucosas. Why are mucosas so terribly important? Well, as far as electrochemistry goes, that's where all the action is, isn't it? Terribly important so far as chemistry, biochemistry goes. As far as Ness goes, we're more interested in tubes and cavities, and things that are twisted around. Next one. I found out that somebody agrees with me, and it's nobody no less than James Oshman, whom I had great talks with in Copenhagen. Remember the amazing conference we had in Copenhagen. There was one subsequently in London for the premiere of the movie. And it turns out that there's a, a group of biologists, James Oshman being the voice of the, this group, that says there is a slow nervous system via the nerve tracts, to the brain, to the pyramids, the spinal column, peripheral nerves, but there is also a second nervous system which is instantaneous. And these, the instantaneous pathways are those which we're looking at with these four maps of the brain. 
these, this is the part of the nervous system that carries the emotions. Emotions are pretty fast. Emotions and perceptions are pretty fast. They're instantaneous. It was then discovered that we had this idea from another area in biology about the morphic field, which we get from Rupert Sheldrake. Rupert Sheldrake's morphic field is these four groups of brain areas. The morphic field is instantaneous. Morphic field is about what things look like. When you get cancer, you change the shape of the body, so it's morphic field. That is absolute. When you get cancer, it is a problem with the morphic field. And why does the cancer occur in one part of the body but not another? You will find the answer in the bit of brain where there is a disturbance of the energy field. There are not many people in medicine who can explain why we get a disease in a certain place and also link it to an emotion. The emotion can be anything. The emotion is just a packet of energy. There are no good or bad emotions. They're all emotions. They're all little packets of information which contain energy. When you have neuro-linguistic programming, you push a button, you connect up, whoop, the little packet explodes, the information comes out, you release energy with the emotion. They go together. People are always asking me, what about the teeth? What about the teeth? So today I'm going to tell you about the teeth. Because the teeth, with the work of in Germany for some time, has shown that you can attach organs to different teeth. This is well known now all around the world. It's another little hologram, but it's not the ears, not the nose, another one in the mouth. Incredible stuff. Now the extraordinary thing is all these holograms are linked up. They're not out on there. All the holograms are linked up, so you've got the matrix is what links them all up. So if you look at the frontal lobe of the cortex and the cerebral medulla, they both link to the teeth. The teeth are very hard to fix because they've got a double connection to two slices of brain. You'll find every part that's got one or more embryological origins is hard to fix. What's got more than one embryological origin? The pancreas, the ears, the heart, and so on. They're dicey to fix. The teeth has got two embryological origins. The next question that arose is, what on earth are we going to do about these emotions? We know that, that we have them, or at least you, you have them when you go to Italy. And what are we going to do about them? You know, have more or have less or don't worry about them, just take drugs or, or what? It turns out that emotions appear to generate conflicts. The conflict is a representation of stress and the stress creates a change to the information getting to the tissue of the body and you have disease. The only trouble is, in psychology, one emotion can change into another emotion. Anger can turn into love, love can turn into anger, and fear can turn into all sorts of things. It can turn into politics. So you see what I mean? What are these emotions? And you say, forget about it. The information comes out, you express it, it's not good, it's not bad, but somehow we've got to get the emotional block to go. And Ness uses one method, there are many methods. It turns out that the shock reactions suggested as important by uh, Ruka Hama appear to be little tape loops, 15 second tape loops, that play all your life and determine your life's course. They're that important. 
And Hamer thought that if you got rid of the tape loop, that the cancer would dissolve and disappear because the morphic field could then operate and keep the body in the right shape. Okay? How simple. Unfortunately, cancer is not simple. We are not simple. We are an overlay of, of lots and lots of bits of information and energy. We then got to the punchline after two and a half years of work. We found an infraceutical that appeared to diminish the effect of these tape loops or the shock reactions. And bear in mind, Hamer could never explain why some people get a shock and later have cancer, whereas other people were there at the same event and nothing. The answer is in imprinting. Did your heart imprint that message, that shock message, or not? So it's a question of your own state of mind, whether or not you succumb to shock. Some people are always shocked. They seem to absorb it. Other people, it doesn't affect them at all. It's the heart. So, we, could we have another slide? Thank you. Liberator. This is uh, being liberated from the past. All the shocks and miseries of the past, like being brought up, going to school, being born, um, going to university, having kids and so on, it's all a bit of a shock. And uh, we always have to adjust, and Liberator is, is it. I think this is my best intraceutical ever. Composition, there you can read. See, all of this information will go online in a few days after this conference, so you don't have to write it. It matches with leukemia, tumors, emotions, listen to brain areas, blah, blah, blah. So, the important thing about what we discovered from Liberator was that we are linking up different parts of the hologram. Aha! What happens in cancer or any other serious disease is a lack of integration between different fields. That's all it is. After all these years, 30, I've done 30 years of discovery trying to work out what's going on, and that's the answer. The function, it appears to remove energy blockages in brainstem, cerebellum, cerebral medulla, and cerebral cord, all at once. Wow! It's better than sliced bread. It's better than sticky tape. It's that important because it does all... F if you don't know which one's the problem, which is most of the time, you use this one to clear away a bit of the fog. So I took uh, Liberator and I was immediately transported to a very happy place. I felt wonderful. Of course, it doesn't... You know it doesn't last. We haven't got a new happy drug, I'm sorry. <laughs> because you come up against another layer of blockages and, and shocks. You just get over one and you get another. Next one. <laughs> there, there are some people, by the way, who've tried Liberator, who've got emotional thing, you know, quite serious emotional troubles. In which case you use Liberator with ESR. When you release an emotion, you release the energy comes with it. This might come out as anger, feeling indignant or upset. ESR is there to smooth away that reaction. You can never get rid of emotions. They will turn into energy. Information, energy, Einstein says they're interchangeable. Now we've got an infraceutical for each bit of brain. Of the morphic, these are morphic field infraceuticals. We've never done this before. This is really revolutionary. Morphic field correctors. Amazing. So cerebral medulla, called CMH, will affect all of those bits. That, these have all been tested. It doesn't mean that if you've got something wrong with your teeth, that cerebral medulla will fix it. It means it's an appropriate consideration. So, special corrector for the calcium metabolism of the entire body. Why? Because we've got teeth, 
we've got skull, we've got all of this lumbar spine and so on. Osteoporosis. See what I mean? A calcium metabolism. Next one, can we have another one? Brainstem hologram, I have needed to take a lot of myself. Look at the problem areas that you get in brainstem hologram. This is the bit right at the top of the spinal cord. The most primitive part of the brain from our reptilian ancestors. Kidney tubules, jejunum, bowel, pancreas, liver. Isn't this a list of the things that go wrong with people? This is the big list. You see there uterus mucosa and the prostate for males. What is it, 40% of males over the age of 40 something have enlarged prostates. And they're grumpy. Grumpy. You treat the prostate and the grumps come out. You treat the uterus and you get all this frustration. You treat the pancreas and you get all this nasty, nasty, vicious. Liver is just rah, just a bit of growl, but pancreas you can really get stuck in. There are people like Louise ha So each organ has its characteristic emotion. This has all been done years ago by Louisa Hay in America, Californian. Lovely lady, I agree with her entirely. Now, now I do. Now, now my prostate's better, I agree with her. But that one, no, 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 that's wrong. So bear in mind that we're all human. Well, most of us are medium human. And that we do have emotion, we do let them out. When you're healing, they come to the surface, which is a darn nuisance. Uh, cerebellum, can we have the next one? Cerebellum hologram, outer mesoderm tissues, mammary gland, corium, pericardium, peritoneum, and pleura. This is to integrate that part of the brain with the rest of the body. So that's what goes wrong, and that's why you get sick. It's not stress. The stress is an information package that has blocked communication in the hologram. Very simple to say, and really hard to reprogram your brain to say this is what's happening energetically. We have left biochemistry behind because that's the nuts and bolts. It's Fine. It's nuts and bolts stuff. Okay, about how. But this is the bigger picture. To regulate the cerebellum, heart, and matrix together, we use cerebellum hologram. This one you'll see has an effect on microtubules. Microtubules turn out to be huge, and other lecturers at this weekend will be telling you more about microtubule function. Now, could we have the next one? This is, this is the most tragic part of your brain. It's very hard to fix the cortex. It goes, well, in my case, people are very intelligent. I work off their cortex. It's the intelligence. It's the intelligence that stops you from getting better. You want to get back into your brain stem and get a bit sort of reptilian. You know, what do your emotions really like? Look at what it matches with. Tongue, thyroid duct, branchial, all this. Throat blocks. Not allowed to say, can't tell you. Block in the throat, that, that sort of idea. Teeth enamel. Alpha and beta ice islets of pancreas. Larynx mucosa, etc. A lot of mucosas of organs. Look at the coronary circulation. You spend most of your life with the coronary arteries almost blocked from about age 25, 
and yet at a certain age, at a certain event, suddenly a little switch goes and the coronary arteries decide not to allow blood through. So there's that emotional thing quite apart from the plumbing aspect of uh, heart disease. Rectal mucosa, pancreas mucosa, bladder mucosa, retina, vitreous eye, and breast ducts, most of the bad breast cancers are ductal cancer. And it's in a different part of the brain from the other type of breast the main types. Okay. So this is the one for breast ducts. And I must emphasize, we're not saying that we have a cure for breast cancer. We're saying we're beginning to understand the bioenergetics of how the morphic field goes wrong. I think that's a bit closer to what we're really saying. The hardest of all to correct It's also got the most interconnections. As you can think, all the rest of my brain came right except the cortex. I'm not even saying it's all right now. It's a bit, mmm. So don't push it. We have a look now at the MRs. That was the morphic field. We are now looking at matrix regulators. Now, I really have a lot to tell you here. <sighs> I was recently talking to Milo Wolf, who's a physicist in California, the guy who can fix toasters and understands the structure of the electron, which I think if you can fit those two in your brain together, you're a genius. And he said he believes there are three, there are three subatomic particles in the field, and all the rest are appearances, as was suggested in 1938 by Schrodinger, a German physicist. Right. So he was most interested when I said, well, actually, the body field, as I understand it, has got three bits. Said, well, of course it would have to. There are three particles. Morphic field, we won't go into that sort of science. We're not doing science today. We're doing clinical. Morphic field, we've got four bits that fit together in that order, in that configuration. If you want to affect them all, if you think there's something wrong with the morphic field, morphic field also goes wrong in arthritis, doesn't it? The shape of the body changes. You get a hump in your spine or lordosis, it's a change in the shape. So it's morphic field to affect all the morphic field together, liberator, or you can even put ES9 and ES10 together. That's an interesting one. We found that when we combine them, talked back to morphic field. Amazing. The heart, we, I haven't finished the research. We know there's four chambers. There's some animal that's got five chambers in there. Oh, alligators or something but nearly everybody else has got four chambers. If you want to affect the heart generally, so far as its integration with the rest of the hologram, you do EI4. That is the big... I only give you one because it's big. It will work. And then we've got the one we know all about. Ness is all about the matrix... The matrix is a theory of biology since 1986, which you can read about. Um, the fluid matrix of the body, connective tissue, and how it works in all through, throughout the body. It turns out that the Chinese meridians are all expressions of the matrix. So until now, Ness has only been doing this one and that one. And since I saw you last, we've learned how to do the morphic field corrections. That's the big message today. We've made a huge breakthrough into a, a new part of the body field. It turned out that the matrix 
is an organized whole. It's not all over the place. It's got a structure. And in one part we've got EI1234, in another part 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on. There are groups. And look, we go up to EI12 and suddenly we've got 13, 14, 15, 16. There are four new high-level integrators that all relate to the brain. We never released them before. We've had the numbers for them for some time, but we didn't release them because we felt we didn't understand them enough to release them and we don't want to be fiddling around with things we don't understand, which is uh, in a commercial thing, that's obvious, isn't it? You have to be cautious. We now understand them a lot more than we did. So now for the first time we've got a picture of the full body field as understood by myself and you see where it fits with a lot of other people's ideas. This fits with Chinese medicine, the, the meridians, this fits with heart math. Heart math spends its whole time studying the heart. They've got a great deal of data about how the heart integrates the other two parts of the body field. So instead of saying to the doctor, look, I've got cancer, I'd like you to poison me and slash me up and burn, you say, look doctor, I've got cancer, but I've got a lack of integration between the three parts of my body field. He thinks, ah, we'll send this one to the psychiatrist. <laughs> Sorry, that's my black sense of humour. Um, so when we come to these things called MRs, we've got a group of ten matrix regulators. Suddenly the penny dropped in my tiny brain after thirty-something years that we need to integrate the function of the hologram as a whole. And we found these matrix regulators, of which we now have ten, will do that. So they're taking a little bit of morphic field, a little bit of heart, a little bit of matrix. Mix them all up, shake them all up, make sure they talk to each other, and we've got a new high-level integrator. Very powerful. So you don't take somebody off the street and say, hey, I've got this matrix regulator, you're really going to get better. Uh, you have to leave it until we've gone through the basic detox reactions and headaches and, you know, therefore a bit later in the nest system. But I don't think by any manner or means that they're dangerous. Harry and I have chugged a bottle. We sort of have a bottle to see what happens. So I'm still here. And I've had some wonderful experiences, some great trips around my life. Uh, this is what happens. You begin to connect things up, so you become a bit less jagged, a bit less all over the place. So, important enough, down here with matrix, when the matrix goes wrong, you think you've got a matrix problem, you can give ES13 and ES15 together at the same treatment, you can even mix them, it doesn't matter. You can mix it in this case. That will treat all of those ETs at once and all of those EIs. Did you see I've got ETs in the matrix as well as EIs? So this weekend I want you to try to get a new picture of the body field. It's a, it's a lot more sophisticated than last year. And um, as you can see, I'm pretty, I'm proud of this achievement because we found out we can now do things we couldn't do before with the uh, NEST system. Now we're going to have a quick look through these um, MRs. They're not new, they're simply combinations of existing interceuticals. So because they're combinations we have to work out what their effect is so that you understand when to use them. These will be used only in the eye health. We're not using them in the nest system simply because the nest system was getting too many interceuticals, too complex. 
It is suggested that you use both systems at once. They help each other. They're working. The eye health presents information to the body in a different format, electromagnetic format, phonon format. Okay? It's phonons. Can I tell you a secret? You know the energy that is the best integrator. We wanted to find an energy that will talk to matrix, heart, and morphic field. And guess what it was? It's the phonon. It's sound. Sound healing is huge. So if you get nothing else out of this lecture, the phonon is king. Or queen if you're a woman. Okay? No, it's king and queen. It's so important. And the phonon can be sound, or it might be, might not hear it, it might. But guess what? The phonon has an affinity for the matrix. Phonons like to travel through matrices. That's in your physics book. The physics book, as usual, only goes that far. They say the phonon finishes at 100,000 hertz, it doesn't, it just keeps going. Phonons don't stop. They go right up to light and beyond. So I told you I had a lot to tell you about this one diagram because we've now got the whole of the body field described for the first time, I hope, and with the science backing to show how it is all, where things are situated. You know, you've got to get the right location. Like real estate, location is everything. Now I'm saying, if you get a totally difficult case that isn't going anywhere, which happens a lot, you could put Liberator, give Liberator, and then you can give EI4, and then you can give ES1315. So it's a wonderful general treatment. To say, Let's integrate your body field a bit. Then we might start to get some action. Okay? Amazing stuff. Now that liberator EI4 and ES1315, that's an MR, isn't it? That's a matrix integrator of the three bits. <laughs> so the people who don't have the eye health can still do it. So I'm showing you how to do a big integrating treatment so that people begin to see I think people who come to see you want you to wave a magic tadpole over them. No, no, you've got to put the tadpole in a plastic bag first and then wave it over the head and say, now you're better. They want you to do something to them. And we're saying, ah, so you've got to do something about yourself, but we will show you the best way to do it. Can we have a slide for, for MR1? This is not, you already know this one. This is simply cell driver with source. Well, I've got a scoring system now that tells you how strong the infraceutical is. We've got a scoreboard. The old infraceuticals, like cell driver, score 135. That's all right. But you put it with source driver, it goes up to 2,000. Over 2,000. If you ever want to see a cell really jump, you give it some source energy. Yuan Qi in Chinese medicine. It's simple as that. The cell works off source energy and it works off a tiny little bit of carbohydrate as well. Chronic inflammation due to no known factor. Everybody gets one of those. You get somebody who's half dead, which is probable. In your clinics, you're getting half dead people. You're not going to get anywhere until you pump some energy in to see what happens. So this is what you do. You can put this one in. Yes. ME. ME is a, a special case of disintegration of, of this holistic field. 
and you put energy in, all sorts of weird things are going to happen. So I'm going to say no, I wouldn't, because we, we'll have things to say about ME at my other lecture, which will be of interest, because we're spot on it here. Why does the nerve sheath suddenly disintegrate and not replenish itself? To arthritis of all types, glaucoma. Use MR1 with MR5, MR9 together for acute chronic lung disease. I tell you this for nothing. You will have phenomenal results with lung conditions that don't respond to anything. MR1, 5, 9. I'm saying use supercell driver for exhaustion, not, not for really complex diseases. MR2, can we have another one? Paul? Oh. Calm mind in pharmaceutical. I have got the least calm mind in the universe. But since, <laughs> since taking this, yes, I'm a bit... I went through a taxi jacking in Spain on my way here, and I stayed calm. The taxi I was in was surrounded, and I had to get out, and I had to get in another taxi, because we're having taxi wars, because some taxis are only allowed to pick up in some towns. And there we were, and I stayed so calm, speaking calmly in Spanish, while I was being hijacked from one taxi to another. So that's when you need calm mind, you just stay in control of the situation. Emotional stress release with ED2 in printer, and ES8 chill. In other words, I put three calming infraceuticals together to make a super karma. Emotional shock, mental distress. Remember what we said about Rika Harmer's idea of emotional tape loops. This is the one for the tape loops. It's more specific in its action than the first one we told you, which is liberate us for the, you know, you start with liberator. You go on to ESR, then you go on to MR2. You've got to have a plan. All right, treatment every hour if possible. This is after a car accident or a bereavement or something. You've got to really, really work on it. Usage, breakdown of human hunger or mental distress for mental vitality and mental integration. MR3, can we have the next one? Restore matrix. EI1315 together, absolutely wonderful, but it's for heavy metals. There's one thing that will stop the matrix in its track, and that's lead, mercury, heavy metals, cadmium from the uh, car exhausts and aeroplane exhaust, cadmium, lead, mercury, completely disrupts the body field. The physiology keeps going. You look as if you're alive, but you're the living dead. So that's what most people are like these days. Acidosis, mercury intoxication, uh, cadmium intoxication. For emergency correction of the matrix, whatever the disease is, people who have breast cancer, can I say invariably, I will say invariably, every breast cancer case I've ever tested has heavy metals blocking the body field. This does not mean that when you get rid of the heavy metals the cancer goes away. I'm sorry, it's very complicated. Daily treatment, all oh, acidosis. Autism, Alzheimer's disease. We're not saying it will fix these diseases, we're saying it matches. That means it's part of the story. Okay, and you may not get success, but whatever you're doing might be helpful to that person in moving along a bit. We have this curious thing that happens with sodium. There is a variety of sodium that appears to be quite toxic for some people. The people who get cancer sometimes react very badly to sodium. Hence the sodium-free diet. 
from my testing there seems to be something in it. But it's, it's a sidetrack. It, it, it's not the big one. I think the big one we're saying is the blockage caused by the emotion. MR4, can we go to MR4? This is called microtubule functions. You listen to half an hour of lectures by biologists on what microtubules do, it's huge. Anywhere where you find a tube, you're going to find interesting things happening energetically. Um, tubes are tuned to a specific frequency, and that frequency depends on the, how wide the tube is and how long it is. Like an antenna, we decide what frequency is tuned to by how long it is and by how big the tube is. Microtubules are antennas for information. So if the microtubule is not wrong, gone wrong, you're not going to get the information. It is so simple. Medicine's simple. Did I ever tell you how simple medicine is? It's just hard to get people right. But the medicine itself, once you understand what you're trying to do, it's a lot easier. So look at this one. It's uh, got matrix in it. It's got rejuve. What's rejuve? This is the one for stem cells going right back to the primitive development of, um, of proteins for, for making us. There's a match with ESR, so you can use MR4 ESR together. This is using eye health. And naturally with eye health, you can put it on the part of the body that has gone wrong. With eye health, we can localize the information exactly to the right part of the hologram. If you're taking drops, there aren't any drops. So uh, that hasn't been edited out. There are, there's no infraceutical for MR4, but there is an application with it for eye health. Remind me to take that out. For any disease where cell division is defective, Alzheimer's disease, amylotropic lateral sclerosis, metaxia. I've got deafness. Can I just say a few sentences about deafness? Because I've got quite a lot of hearing loss, 30, 40 dB in the high registers, quite a lot. But I survive. I don't have any hearing aid. I have done testing for every part of the ear. Like I saw hundreds of components in the ear mechanism. There is nothing wrong with my ears. Bit of a shock. What happens is there is an enormous part of the brain concerned with it's the software to tell the ear how to work. So all of this is extremely unorthodox, but most interesting. Because my hearing is gradually getting more coherent. What happens is with deafness is you can hear, as you just don't know what it is. In other words, the coherence goes. When you restore coherence to parts of the brain which are concerned with healing, most this lateral area, you do get changes. So we're going looking at microtubule function all over the body in every cell. MR4 matches with a long list of negative emotions and not to any positive ones. Ah, should you therefore use it? People who go deaf don't want to hear things. They don't want to pick up a negative message. That's a horrible thing to say for anyone who's deaf. I know you're sensitive about deafness. And when you say that, it, it's uh, an emotional bomb. Um, well, there it is. We couldn't match MR4 with anything positive. And I have to tell you this because if they're a pretty negative person to start with, you're not going to give them MR4 because they're going to get a lot worse. The curious thing is the body has a self-correcting mechanism. The heart, the myocardium only responds 
to positive emotions. Okay, so when in doubt, treat the heart. The myocardium only links to positive emotions. The moment it goes negative, the heart doesn't know about it. Isn't it wonderful? We've got this, this protection which is there. So, yeah, so I'm saying you can always link MR4 with any ET. Now, of course, you've all done our courses. You know that all the ETs link to the myocardium, the source of positivity. Lovely. So don't use MR4 on its own. Next one, please. MR5, harmonize emotions. A complex of ES3, ESR, ED2 and ES8. Yes, the effect is fairly instantaneous. But nice. These turn out to be quite easy to use with no bad side effects because a lot of different things together that balance. This is the one for emotional patterns that form self-preserving loops in behavior. You've heard of people going loopy. What they really mean is they've got a repeating pattern of behavior that is not appropriate to the circumstances. That's loopy. We've all got them, so um, it's not just me, it's all of us as humans are taught. And there's this awful thing. I don't agree with psychology because it's about conditioning. It's fine for rats, so I'm sorry I'm not a rat. I can be, but I'm not. Um, harmonize emotions for the self-preserving loops. No effects have been noted that are deleterious. Can we have it? Next slide. I was talking to a practitioner last time I was here in Germany who put me on to the idea of the chordate nucleus as being super important in uh, our efforts to change people's behavior towards like normal integrated patterns, okay? Recent NIST research shows a match between chordate nucleus and MR5 as well as hearing. Hearing is all about understanding. It's not just about receiving a sound signal. The extraordinary thing, if you want to improve somebody's hearing, you've got to teach them how to send energy out. The ear is a transmitter, the eye is a transmitter. This is the out wave. You've got all this energy coming into the human body field. You've got to have some going out to keep the law of conservation in physics. It's physics. There's no physics in your medical textbook. To improve your hearing, you have to learn how to send energy out. It's all the opposite. They all want to get energy in. Oh, I can't quite hear. You say, you just stay there and send energy out. You might get lucky. You might hear something. I know, it's crazy stuff. I puzzled over it for some time, but you'll hear more about it from Dylan. I think there's a lot of people could say things here. MR5 matches the outwave of the proton. It's one of the subatomic particles, and it's the one linked to mass and gravity. Proton is big. Outwave of the proton, eerie. And chordate nucleus. Isn't it amazing that we may have receptors for subatomic particles in our bodies? I bet you never even thought of that before. Incredible idea. So, to affect hearing loss, we do the outwave. Consciousness of the past, inability to let go of the past, inner fears, and just putting the brakes on generally. And some people just won't get better. I used to tell them, another practitioner who's really good, you have to send them elsewhere if you can't get them to move. 
And you can send them to somebody you like, or you can send them to somebody you don't like. It's fine. Because they'll never get better. Never, never. I found the people that came to me and said, Oh, Mr. Fraser, you're my last hope. I thought, oh, yes, this one won't get better. Straight away, I said, right. The last hope people never get better unless they realise they've got to do something and not find, you know, they get hold of you and grab hold of you. You say, no, you can do it, not me. I'm all right. I don't need it. You've got to do something. Oh. So there's a picture of the chordate nucleus right in the middle of the limbic system. MR6 reconnection, this is huge reconnection. We, we named it after a famous healer, Eric Pearls. Lovely man, he's a chiropractor from US, and he found that he was healing people, not doing bone snapping. Something else was happening. He discovered that when he moved his hands like this, this is all he does. He was correcting the body field inside that person's body. Amazing cures. You have the intention, you move your hands, somehow you learn to correct the kinks in the body. You find a little bit here, not so good. The body field extends outwards, in wave, out wave. It's all around us. And he just does this. You see that in the living matrix. And we named this after his process because I discovered that when people get a serious disease, instead of a light-hearted one, serious disease, energetic integrators 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 drop out. In other words, the scaling that's supposed to go up and down the frequency realm, from 0 hertz up to 24 to 10 to the 24th hertz, the whole EM spectrum scaling instantaneous, like this, squish, squish. There's a whole dropout area where the scaling stops. And that means the message never gets through to the hologram because there's this big empty spot. It's not a blockage, it's a dropout. You see what I mean? It works like a blockage. Well, when we discovered that, we simply put them all together, EI 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, combine them, pop them in, overcomes the scaling blockage. Use with MR6. Now this you can use with the eye health, again there's no infraceutical. Amazing, almost instantaneous reactions are bowel activity increases, people who cannot go to the toilet and remove waste. People who don't respond to Ness are frequently so intoxicated there's no way. You'll do better treating them after a major bowel movement. Just get rid of all that stuff. You'll find it works a lot better. It, it's, it's obvious, isn't it? Bowel activity increases. Sweats, aches in the teeth, aches in the eyes, ears, jaws. Emotional reactions. In other words, when you connect the system up, off it goes. The first thing it does is start to try to get rid of the product, the waste product of the cells. So you're not cleansing at all. You're getting physiology to start working. Slightly different. Then we found it matched with benign and malignant tumours of all types. Pointing to the fact that cancer is about lack of communication in the body. It's not about not having some weird herb from the Amazon or something you didn't eat. It's, well, it is a little bit, but mostly we say the really big one is this failure of information to get through. Cancer people never die of the cancer. They die of the failure of information. Their physiology just stops. Ooh. That's what happens. Look what it matches with chronic fatigue syndrome lateral sclerosis, benign tumours in general, malignant sarcomas, hernias, HIV AIDS is a, an information disease, if it's anything, and all of the classical homeopathic miasms. Harry doesn't like to talk about my I think 
homeopaths made some wonderful discoveries about energetic medicine, we acknowledge them. There are the three or four major miasms which show pictures of uh, energy communication breakdown, all slightly different. And they related them to um, tuberculosis and syphilis and so on. They related them back to the ETs. Fine. But we're looking at it a different way now. We're saying all those miasms, if you're a homeopath, you don't know what to do about a tubercular miasm case. This is what you do, MR6. All of them together. So expect some fairly dramatic things to happen. If you know there's dramatic things to happen, you don't keep the eye health on them for too long on the first treatment. It's just obvious what you should do. The scalar wave is what links across the entire electromagnetic energy spectrum. So we now have a model in physics and possibly electronics, possibly in engineering, about this process of scaling. Well, more to talk about the scaling and global field theory on Sunday. Have I got any time left? What, ten or five or hmm? ten? Mucho. MR6, the reconnection. I believe when these so called psychic healers doing laying on of hands and, and this stuff, they're reconnecting the body field. That's what, it works. We know it works. We say, we can tell you how it works, and they go, oh, maybe they don't want to know. But we need to know, because when there's this big dropout in scaling, huge problem with information transfer in the body field. Next one, please. MR7 for calcium and terrains. This is simply EI6 with EI12. There's a mathematical reason why we did this. You can go into the maths if you like. If you're good at solid geometry, you haven't got time, have you? Practitioners just have to, just have to fix people. You don't want to know why. But I'm lucky to have enough time to sit around and think about why. Uh, there's a, there is a, a geometric reason why we add 6 and 12. When you do, it's no longer about kidney and spleen. It suddenly matches to calcium element as well as asthma. Matches sarcomas in all parts of the body. What does that mean? We don't know. But we know that this one is about calcium. We don't know the mechanism of cancer is incredibly complex. It matches with calcium phosphate, but not the other salts. So the matches to calcium, calcium, but calcium phosphate, califos. If you're a homeopath, go and look up califos. It's all about it. Dosage, the parathyroid, calculi, calcification, all types of asthma. Does anyone else link asthma with calcium metabolism? They may not be linked, but they're in the same basket. That's all we're saying. Most interesting idea. When you take this, you do pass a bit of mucus from the chest. All these have been tested many times, many times over a long period. See what happens. Aches in the legs of all things. All of the terrains, all 15 ETs, will match to this corrector. Remember we think having a virus is actually the body trying to heal itself and getting it, is, that doesn't quite work. And we found it difficult to make the terrains resolve so that you get healthy again. Asthma could be seen. Asthma people always have a lot of ETs. I guess you've seen that. There are half a dozen ETs. Asthma is the body trying to heal itself, sending out 
apparent viral messages, but it doesn't resolve. It doesn't work. It's a good try. This might help the body to resolve that terrain problem in asthma. Next one, MR7 calcium terrains, MR8. This is, this is yours. We had consultations about this. You look at a nerve cell, it's got bits that come out. Dendrites. On the tip of the dendrite is a protein on the growing tip. When exposed to vaccinations, or indeed anything with mercury in it, it just withers and dies. And this is the interconnection part of the nervous system. The dendrites are linking up to make a matrix of nerve tissue. It's made up from a picture of a neuron and the dendrites. It's made up from a picture of the growth cone and a picture of the protein, which is called tubulin. It's not made up of other infraceuticals. This one is straight out going to uh, the chemistry. Bio it's going straight to biochemistry. Then astoundingly it matched to many neural degenerative diseases. Autism, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, motor neuron, nothing much you can do with motor neuron. Here is something that is a possibility for the future, we don't know whether, how useful it is clinically, but we know it helps the body feel, so we use it. Multiple sclerosis, here's a multiple sclerosis thing, also matches back to MR4. Remember, MR4 is the one for the microtubules. Small dosage over a long period is suggested, and it can go with EI5 and EI7, can go with source. With people with MS or other severe nerve degenerative diseases, if you suddenly put a whole lot of energy in, no, they flip out. The big rule comes from Chinese medicine, never overstimulate a sick organ. That is the big rule from Chinese medicine, which I wish was more popular in Europe. You think, oh, something wrong with the liver, we'll do something in the liver. No. So let's do something that helps the liver. Oh, maybe the kidneys, you know. You, you don't necessarily go straight to a sick part of the body and put energy in because you didn't correct the information flow first. When the information flow is going, then you can use MR1. Then you can flood with energy. You get the idea. Hearing loss following vaccination. Can we have the next slide? My brother also has, he's like Beethoven, he's profoundly deaf. He doesn't play the piano, but if he did, he'd break the keyboard and he wouldn't hear a thing. He said that his hearing loss came on after adult vaccination. Now, I'm not saying that proves anything. I'm saying this is another event. Then I thought, well, Let's look into it. What can we do about it? I can't do anything about it except try to fix it. We found that we had transcell focus, another infraceutical I'll be telling you about very quickly, transcell focus and MR8. When you put them together, suddenly it talks back to every known vaccination. I didn't have any data for the latest experimental ones for um, influenza A. I haven't got it, I'm not going to get it. You see what I mean? We can't prove anything, but there are energy links there showing that vaccination in some people may cause a hearing loss. Just the faintest possibility is there. So we use transfer focus with MR8. If you think there's been damage to the nervous system by mercury or anything else for that matter, we have to go fast. Liberator MR9, 
the greatest of all the matrix regulators is liberator. We've already done it. it that's the big one that removes the blockages in the four parts of the brain. It makes you feel really good, friendly and nice. Okay? Love it. MR10 we'll have to do fairly quickly. This is made with MR, MR3, EI4, EI6, EI12. Fork 6, 12. This is another scaling corrector. Remember the idea of energy flow as it goes from low frequency up to high. This flip of energy. This intraceutical unites the matrix that hasn't been scaling, particularly with the heart. The heart responds to phonons a lot. The heart manufactures phonons. It doesn't just respond to them. So when you play nice music, it's for your heart. You listen with your heart, you don't listen with your ear. Try listening with your heart to some of our records. Harry started a record company now, we're, we're, we're now doing music, so uh, the, it, it's imprinted music with good stuff on it. Now, just transil focus, and I promise to go away and have your lunch. Transil focus is a, a wonder. It's a heart field corrector. It belongs right in the middle there. RNA was there before DNA. Have you heard this one? There's such a thing as paleogenetics. They study the DNA and RNA of ancient fossils and stuff to find out the history of the development of DNA RNA. Fascinating stuff. And it turns out RNA has its own group of enzymes that are different from DNA and that RNA was there possibly before DNA. So if you're going back to the body trying to correct itself by making enzymes, this is the, the great theory of biology since 1955, that the body makes enzymes to control itself via the um, DNA, RNA. Sure, it's a bit right, but it's the RNA enzymes that we're interested in. The RNA enzymes appear to be healing, like you have to go back into yourself a little bit to find out how to fix yourself. Transel focus. When we do this, people say, have you got anything for the foci? Helmut Schimmel in Germany and a lot of other of the German doctors got a system for treating the foci. The disease is focused in one area. Tonsils is a good one middle ear infections, um, breast glands, bronchi, middle ear, sinus is a big one, mastoidal and sphenoidal sinus and bile ducts. Why does the body suddenly decide to create a disease in a certain spot? Why does it happen? It's because the, it's the body's way of trying to heal itself. So if you whip the appendix and tonsils out, you're diminishing the uh, possibility of the body healing itself by giving another shock. That's the way we look at it. In an emergency, that is not the case. In an emergency, you've got to have it. Sure, I understand that. So this is how we treat the foci, by treating something that appears to affect the RNA enzymes that the body can make, not DNA. Let me give you a, just a quick example. Two minutes. Or, I thought you meant two hours. Two minutes. I promised to stop talking two minutes. We got a hold of this guy that couldn't write and couldn't read, age 23. You can't do much in our society when you can't read and write. 
And in Spain, there aren't any courses for reading and writing for adults that you can get to. So what you do? So this was an interesting one. I know you'd be interested. We tested this guy, and he got EI13, which is one of the high-level uh, EIs, which we call hearing and learning. But before that, we got ET naught, which is related to rubella, which can upset learning, learning activities in childhood. He's fine now. He just couldn't learn at the time he was at school. Didn't get a thing out of school. Then we found Liberator was needed, a break from the shocks in the past, so we'd like to start again. ESR was needed because Liberator was going to let go some powerful emotions. He needed MR8 for nerve cell regeneration. There had been some physical nerve damage so that he couldn't learn to read and write. It just wasn't, it wasn't that he was being a bad boy. It's no use punishing people for being sick. You have to accept their sickness first of all. Rejuvenation is about rejuvenation of stem cells. So something went drastically wrong with this guy's mental development at the time he was at school and he failed to learn to read and write. And I'm saying, well, we don't know, but we've got a list of infraceuticals or messages that we could use with the eye health to see if we could get a change for the better instead of this intense moralization about having to concentrate more and so on. I've been a school teacher, I, I know school kids, I know what they're like. As a rule, they don't concentrate. Okay, what have we said? We've got three parts of the body field. The heart is responsible for linking them all. So if you don't know what to do, treat the heart. Treat the heart all the time. Then we found that we've got a set of ten new infraceuticals that are in the eye health, which are for linking up the three parts of the body field. Thank you very much for your attention.